Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Bros with Brains. I believe it's episode 20, but who knows these days? And, you know, we do thank you very much for continuing to check in and listen to this podcast because we don't understand why. As always, here with my boy Chrissy Black and Benjamin Button from Queensland. How's his name taken ben, off? ben 10 or Ben 10. <laughs> well, well, yeah, we were calling you, well, we called him Benjamin Button last week. So it's Ben 10 this week. It really works well for you, though. You look like a Benjamin Button. I, I wish I had you backwards. I feel, I feel like if he got rid of his mustache, he would be Ben 10. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, this is definitely an age predominant. Like, what's, if your, I got rid of what's, your, um, what's your favorite one of his like fucking original transformations? You know, he would hit the watch and like he would transform. Now, yeah. I love the fire one, it was fucking wicked. This is showing your age because I have no idea. I've never watched an episode of Ben nah, 10. When he went to the, when he went to the, he could only do it very often, uh, ever so often, but he went the full omniverse, like the omni one. That was fucking sick. He was like basically like the Goku. Oh, that that. Was like, yeah, when he could wear that thing, when he could transform into that. Um, but the crystal one was pretty cool. Yeah, I have no idea what we're talking about right now. So cool. <laughs> You can leave the chat. <laughs> yeah, out, uh, the it's like I'm out. I'm just gonna go get a drink. No. <laughs> um, so how are we, lads? What's been happening? Same shit, different day. <sighs> Training, work, prep, yeah. use, you know. How is the land of the queen, uh, Benny boy? Well, it's actually not too bad. I um, yeah, it's, it's it's good. I think we've had we've had a couple of omni omnicron outbreaks in the Gold Coast, maybe, but nothing's come up this way yet, closer to Brisbane. So I'm not stressing about it. Um. All my clients are still able to go to the gym. Everyone's killing it. Life's good. Fucking business is progressing. Training's gone up the fucking well, gone up the wall. Yeah, that'll do. Um, yeah, so your knees bent? No, nah, knees are good. Hey, knees are actually good. Um, I'm more I'm more mindful now that as weight progresses, I have that slight fear of my lower back more than anything. But that's just something I think is going to play off for pretty much forever. So, um, dolts dolts limited to me to micro progressions weekly. So if we're going to try and push overload every single week. Um, capping it at say 2.5 to 5 kilo increments as opposed to just fucking sending it balls to the walls and pushing 20 kilo progression for no reason. Um, it's not what I did today, I swear. <laughs> and I, oh, I, enjoy, I enjoy lower doing back it. injury it's probably about five up. years ago. What's that? I had a pretty significant lower back injury probably about five years ago. So it's fucking man, the pain that you go through, like it was probably the worst two years that I've probably had in my life. It was fucking debilitating. So I know the I know the feeling. Like I remember the first week or two weeks, I literally couldn't even get up off the ground. I was trying to write like assignments, and I had a fucking pillow under my hips, and I was like, <laughs> I had recently broke my ankle from playing footy, and then I was playing cricket and fell like awkwardly out on the boundary taking a catch, and I don't know if that was the the catalyst for it. Went back into the gym, started training again. And then I didn't I actually feel anything until the next day when I woke up and I was like, fuck, what the hell is going on here? And it took me like two years of rehab, like to fucking get back to, to full health. Yeah, I'm finally back to full health now, but fuck, it's a slow process. Agonizingly slow. But it's most, imp- most importantly, did you make the catch? I made the catch always. Uh, that's all right. As long as, you made, as long as you made the catch and did the team thing, it's fine. No one cares about your injuries. <laughs> there was balls going past Chris's face. He's making that catch. Yeah. <laughs> always. Like there usually is. Yeah. <laughs> red red balls going past night. his face. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, so that um that that for me, I like it's it's minuscule weight to what I used to do, but um form's been much more standardized. Performing of repetition has been great. Um flexion of my knees has been way better. So I started off on so basically the way I rehab went for, for my knees was um, identifying the issue, easing off load, um, letting the tendons try and heal somewhat, um, get a bit of movement through there, correct the movement pattern, then start strengthening. Um, so it's been a long, long road, but I started off on when we felt comfortable enough to touch the axe squat. I think it was like five kilos aside for my first sets. Um, and I hit 127.5 for three sets of 12 to 15 yesterday so they were pretty fucking cooked I had a nice little chuck in the old toilets so that was fun but Sometimes. yeah it's good it's good because now i'm not i'm less worried about the knee because i am a lot more conscious of the shift and, and uh how i'm loading it to make sure i'm trying to optimize uh loading it correctly and just more mindful of uh forcing too much of a correctional shift and then uh, slip, slipping my back so that's more my concern now is just being mindful of that just because i don't want to spend another fucking six months or four years in rehab yeah, people don't realize how rewarding it is to come back from an injury. And like, even if three plates aside is not something that you used, it was something you could do easily before. They don't realize what it's like to finally get back to there and you actually feel like 
the process is kind of going somewhere because it can yeah. feel like like even like I would try and like probably journal as well when I was going through my uh, my kind of injury that I had. Um, they all stem from the ankle. Fuck my gait, and then obviously I started getting knee pain and stuff like that as well. So knee rehabilitation issues, mm-hmm. fucking lower back issues, um, and yeah, it's just an agonizingly slow process. And it's just like you realize from like day to day how much fluctuation there can actually be, and it feels like for the longest time that like nothing's nothing's happening. You know, you're not getting any yeah. better, and then all of a sudden you're two years down the line and you're back to three plates again, and then you finally start to build some momentum. But fuck, it's so slow. That's what I, that's what I don't I don't like about people that sort of like what's the word they bitch and moan about the current circumstance and fail to look at the long picture like time is going to pass irrespective of whether you do something or not so to me if I'm going to be in pain for day one and if I do nothing I'm going to be in pain on day 750 then the logic for me is to reduce that pain and be in a better position by you know two the two year mark that I have now improved and gotten better even even if I'm still somewhat pain. I'm still better than what I was on day one because the alternative is I just do nothing and stay there and just feel like shit. So for me, like those people that are kind of like, well, you know, oh, I hurt myself. So that's it. Like it's fucking not. There's- Man, how is it? They just think I just need to rest. I just need to rest. And it's like two months, three months in. And they're yeah. like, I still need to rest. It's like, no, mate, these injuries were used yeah. to moving. These injuries respond better to actually, you know, making yourself go through progressive ranges of motion that over time you can get more and more and more, even just like something is rewarding. For me, I remember was even just bending down to be able to touch my fucking shoelaces. Yeah. To be yeah. able to tie my shoes. You know, for the longest time, like I probably still still even do it now. Like a lot of my underlying habits that I had had, um, like poor habits in terms of like, I suppose, bending over with excessive lumbar flexion as opposed to bringing my foot up and tying my shoelaces, um, like a fucking lumbar pillow in the car. All of this shit I still yeah. do now. Even when I bend over, I don't ever bend over uh, without like, turning to one side and one hip going down. So like that's what they don't, people don't realize is these, these especially a lower back injury like that with the poor blood supply takes so long to heal. Oh, fuck yeah, yeah. That you need to be doing everything bang on for 24 hours a day, not just that rehab that you're doing in the gym. It's yeah. how you sleep. I sleep with a cushion between my legs for fucking ages. You know, I still yeah. do now, but yeah, like the, I, know what you, I know what you went through because it's fucked. If you, yeah, if you, if you do get a chance to read the blog I put up. Um, I read it, I read it, yeah. It, it was... Um, yeah, fucking for me, it was like four years of like, okay, so every day was rehab of some sort. So whether it was like getting up at a certain time, going through my movements, doing the exercise they gave me, then going to Pilates, then going to yoga, then going to rehab, going to the pool, going to like physiotherapy, whatever it was. So to me, it was like every single day was to a singular outcome of getting back from the injury or getting to a better position. But like I said, I mean, if, if you just kind of like sit around like, and the thing is too, the body heals to how you like, where you allow it. So if you, if you get stiff, if you become rigid and stiff from failing to move because you're resting and the body starts to acclimatize to that and you get stuck in these positions or you're failing to increase flexion and extension, that's how the body's going to be now. And you start getting stuck in these movements where you just don't have range of motion. It's too stiff. It's jarred. Everything hurts. It's like, you're going to be in pain regardless. You may as well be in pain from improving it as opposed yeah. to the pain of fucking being stuck where you are in agonizing sheer pain because you're just being lazy. Yeah. Specific adaptations impose demands. They really do. But yeah. So that's been, that's been my week. It's good. Um, actually starting to see a light in the tunnel now where numbers are exceeding past what they were and, and we can actually start to get some growth. So actually having legs that have improved with rehab going on means that they're going to be fucking fantastic. Now that's all done. And all I could do was Bulgarian split squat for like two straight years. <laughs> that was like my primary movement pattern. That was it. <laughs> if you haven't actually read Ben's post, it's over on Matter as well. So. Yeah, same. I agree, Chris. Did you get that as well, Scaffy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you just went like completely slow motion and it's just like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm you guys look fine. Uh, hopefully the sound's good. Yeah, none. Nah, completely Back missed. But all we heard it was it's on matter, and then that was it. <laughs> and then, no, really, I, what I was saying, it's it's on matter. If you haven't read Ben's article, go and check it out. There you go, <laughs> nice and clear now. But yes, <laughs> uh, mo- moving along from that moving little. Along. Uh, moving along. Along. How's, how's Melbourne? Well, I mean, it's not too bad now. Sun's out. Uh, it was shitty this morning when we went to the gym. So you know, man, the weather down here just changes on a whim. Like, because I I then? walk to the gym to get my steps in and walk home, and fuck, sometimes it can be rain. It can be raining on my way there. I walk out, it's sunshine, then it's windy, then there's hail, bro. Like, it really uh, is crazy. You, yeah, you get all four seasons literally in the space of an hour here. 
I didn't fully <laughs> grasp that until I moved down here and started living down here. That it can change like that, you know. Yeah, it, it really, really does. So it's still it's not too bad now. I think it's supposed to be all right for the next couple of days. So should be right, but we'll see what happens. But Melbourne's good. Same old shit, different day. Training, eating, loving life, posting up one pose because that's all I got. <laughs> You're really gonna work on that, eh? <laughs> Bro, I, I'm telling you, put up that put up that um, side chest we've been working on. It's good. Yeah, he's, he's, they're not ready, mate. They're not ready. <laughs> they're not ready. They're the internet's can't handle it. <laughs> they're not ready. They're not ready. The interwebs just... can't deal with it. Hey, now it's starting a trend. We've got other people posting up double back biceps and fucking. <laughs> even, even my clients are catching on to what they're doing now. They're just like, is this dude got to do anything else? No, nah, yeah. bro. You really have That's to hit. Uh, tag us three in your best rear double bicep shot. Exactly right. Just tag us. You know, we'll share it. <laughs> Put it on the podcast. We'll do, we'll do it all, mate. It's all, it's all and we'll tell it. you how to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually watched on the on the bro chat. They did like a, a um uh fuck. I think it was Nick guy Ian and yeah the, the main guys and they did a um uh physique assessment and yeah. just like, rate your rate yeah, they rate, 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 rate physiques. Yeah, rate my physique. Yeah, oh, right. yeah. we should do that. If you just want us to rate, if you want, anyone wants us to rate your physique, send it in and we won't be too harsh. That's actually a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> like it'll be constructive criticism, but mm. yeah, send it in and we'll actually have a look it'd be, at it. It'd be good for YouTube because then mm. everyone that's on YouTube can uh, you know, actually see what's going on. Because obviously with an audio podcast, when they do it, that's the only annoying thing when you're listening to it. You're like, fuck, I want to see this person. And then <laughs> you have to actually get on YouTube to, okay. to see Scaffy it. With a, Scaffy with a nice plug for the YouTube. That's it. Right, well, did you write it down on your dick board like we were meant to? Yes, I did, actually. For those that listen and want to watch YouTube, you know, like, subscribe, whatever yeah. it is, comment. I was going to say, <laughs> leave a comment episode, shit. not middle fucking halfway through it. Oh, we'll say it at the fucking beginning, middle and end, bro, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> if he doesn't say anything, he just comes in every every sentence, chimes in with like, YouTube, yeah. YouTube. <laughs> but, you know, we'll make it like a, a YouTube ad. So it just pops up and says, so also <laughs> like this subscribe. podcast sponsored by <laughs> Bros of Brains YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> If you want to see, if you want to see three very average pills, go onto the YouTube. Please like, comment, and subscribe. There you go. <laughs> we'll, we'll make Chris do them every time now. He just does it so calmly. Yeah, that's very calm. Good. I just took my ashwagandha. You know, post workout. I'm, I'm chill. <laughs> your ten milligram, your ten grams of ashwagandha. My ten grams. I'm just per, per pill. I'm Great chill. Nice nap. <laughs> anyway, what do we want to talk about today? Should we get into? Sh- Q and A straight away. Why not? We yeah, got a few questions. Let's, extra special episode for number twenty. Let's, let's let's kick it off with the first question. Yes. Do we want funny or do we want serious, Ben? Oh, I reckon. I reckon funny. I reckon funny. Let's go uh, funny. Talk, talking about back pain's a bit depressing. Yeah, yeah. Well, we really started that off in a very serious note. So, all right. Well, let's because life is serious. Let's is. start off with funny. Would you rather permanent DOMS in your quads and hamstrings or biceps and triceps? I'm going. I'm going to ham- quads and hamstrings because I kind of oh. get off on it. It's it's nice. Nah, fuck that. Biceps and triceps for me all day, every day. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going buys and tries. For, imagine just because, walk, just because you have to like, walk everywhere. Like, imagine walking up and down stairs and you're constantly. That's fine, to, I like imagine, that. Though. Imagine having Dom's while you're trying to wank. Well, like you just Dom's getting up and off, like on and off the toilet. I'm like, nah, man, fuck that. I like that feeling though. It feels uh, mad. Yeah, the only thing look, for me is the only thing for me is that 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 hamstring dom creates a lot of stiffness and that rigidness pulls down my back and it just hurts like fucking like yeah. I'm usually out. Well, Absolutely. let's just let's pretend that these doms are not leading to any potential. No, back. no, they're just doms. They're completely just doms. But imagine then also getting having leg doms while trying to train upper. So it's kind of like you've just trained upper. Now you got a full body doms. Like fuck that. Well, that'd be the same way either way. <laughs> Well, no, because it's just arms. It's just like biceps, triceps. Like, yeah, but then go to train, you, go to train chest or fucking shoulders or back with hardcore DOMS in your fucking tries and buys. Yeah, but you can still like hit a good leg session. But imagine like when you use your legs for like an upper body session, like you're doing, you know, like a, if you're doing a chest, like a chest press, like you still press through the floor with your legs. You still yeah, get that. Where on the opposite, you're not really using your upper body when you're doing like lower body work, really. Let's be real. Like, fuck that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just, I, fuck I that noise. Fuck that noise. Yeah. Fuck I don't me. want any arm doms. Chris is just sitting there like self-asphyxiation getting off. <laughs> <laughs> All these doms. <laughs> <laughs> we should also uh, preface that muscle damage is not necessarily a good correlator of an effective yeah. session either. Do we have to touch this again? Do we have to? I feel like That's we've like... gone over this five times. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is number six, bitch. Let's yeah. do it. Doms and soreness <laughs> is not equates progression and good training. No, but the argument on the other side to that is DOMS is a measure of actually hitting the target muscle. This so, is true. You know, I'd, true. Ra- I'd rather have DOMS than not have DOMS if I've pushed a new stimulus in a particular muscle group. I'm just saying. 
Everyone's like, yeah, DOMS isn't effective. It's like, it's not effective. However, it does tell you that you've worked that tissue. It tells us it's something. Like, it's like Dalt, when Dalt today, he posted the thing about, like, and people say it all the time, it's like um, Apple, Apple watches or Fitbits and that aren't accurate. But if it's consistent enough, you get the accuracy from it. So yeah, that's exactly. true. If it's like using a piece of the same piece of cardio equipment again and again and again. Yeah. It may not be 200 calories, but it's still relative to that same measure each time yeah. you use that piece of equipment. Yeah. It helps you standardize, mm. which is always handy. Hey, right. back in with the standardize. Hey. Uh, the post, the post that you put up, Ben. <laughs> I, think I, I, think I, had, I think I know a guy that talks about that. I know a guy. <laughs> I feel like we've all got posts on it by now, yeah. surely. Um, all right, let's get into something a little bit more, I think, fun. What Just the hell? Quick one. Can you hear anything in the background? No. Sick. No. Perfect. Awesome. Oh, maybe a little bit, but nothing crazy. Oh, to preface this, everyone, Chris made us super early. We're going to be super late, and now we're super early just because some guys are banging some shit in the background of his house, apparently. No, they're drilling into the wall. A scaffold. They're putting scaffolding up right outside my window. And it also just shows you how much of a life we don't have that we were able to just adjust and jump on the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, let's get on now, boys. All right. (laughs) Okay, fine. All right. I've got a meal sitting in the microwave, but (laughs) whatever. So what the hell are bitch tits referenced in the ICN rule book as a sign of drug use? Isn't that, isn't that just off season? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so bitch tits are more than just the old uh, saggy man titties from being too fat in the off season. Bitch tits are typically characterized as like a gynecomastia or like an enlargement around of the tissue of the gland around the nipple. And it's very, very evident to see. So like in a, in any bodybuilding show, like it's not a look that you want to see, but especially not in a, 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 a natural bodybuilding show. Because um, yes. it's one of the characteristics of, hey, mean. this guy may be using drugs. Yes, so it's the estrogen receptor in the breast tissue that's um, being cleaved to effectively and enlarges the tissue in that area. Um, you can get it, however... Um, when you're going through puberty as a male, um, it's quite, it is common and sometimes is uh, needed, uh, sorry, surgery is needed to clear it as you get older. Sometimes it just doesn't clear by itself. And obviously if, you, if you're young and you don't know any, any better, you don't know what it is. So you don't really get it checked probably and you don't you know, look to, to get rid of it. And then as you get older and you probably get into this sport and you're like, ah, now I know what that is. And I'm Oh, hey, the judges it. are going to mark me down. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> now the surgery and get this removed. Yeah. I, I haven't seen the, I, I don't know, you guys might have, I haven't seen the ICN rule book, so I'm not sure what it actually says mm. about that. But I mean, it'd be pretty easy to get a testosterone te- check and just yeah. be like, well, clearly you're not on. Exactly. Well, usually what they'll do is if they suspect it, they will test you. Otherwise they won't yeah. test you. Yeah, it's just like... But they, they mark down the appearance of it as well? Of course, yeah. I mean, that yeah. makes sense. That yeah. part they're, makes sense. They're supposed to. They are supposed to. However, I have seen them not do that. I mean, yeah. yeah seen I lot of, seen ICN do a lot of things that they will not do. <laughs> it's like, would that technically be discrimination? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? What did that person identify How as? How fucking like? dare you? <laughs> I identify as a natural, therefore I am a natural. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, I'm a IFBB pro. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, what's his name? Charles Soon? Charles Soon and... Charles open, Soon and um, oh, yeah. He smacked oh, yeah. that bitch up, eh? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently he um, he's, he may be going to prison again. He's yeah. been to prison once before. Charles he may Soon. be going to prison because he... Yeah. That apparently, they were in, a, in a, um, a restaurant. They were taking pictures. Of, these ladies were taking pictures of him with the phone. And he literally lost his shit. He grabbed the phones out of their hands and started smashing them on the ground. And like he ended up getting arrested and stuff, but I don't know if he's going to end up going back to jail. But yeah, he smashed their phones on the ground. He lost it because he's taking pictures of it. That's what natties do. Yeah. <laughs> apparently, apparently he's a bit of a bad boy. He's a bit of a bad boy. He um he also not like long ago on stage, so. bashed, yeah bashed some dude in the gym. I don't know what he was doing, but punched some guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean it depends. It could have been warranted. <laughs> it's kind well, of like that's true. you know yeah. you know when it's like that people like when a dog bites someone and everyone's like oh my god it's a bad dog it's like no 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 what did you do to piss yeah yeah off? like if you've, been, if you've been punting your dog yeah, for six months and then all of a yeah, sudden like, yeah, you know, I, feel, I feel that maybe yeah but no. until you see his reaction to two chicks taking pictures of him and you're like oh maybe yeah. a bit of an over okay maybe, yeah, maybe right. he's a fucking moron yeah. is there a video on it because we should try and find that for fun i don't know but there is an article there is an oh, article right yeah. right right <laughs> So was, that federation just made me laugh for so long. Hey, muscle mania, everyone in there, like Ulysses and um, what's the other uh, guy, Simeon Panda. And oh, yeah, the, the fake daddies. Uh, 
Yeah, fake natty's muscle mania. Oh yeah. man, the fake natty fed. Didn't yeah. Ulysses have to take it out of his bio because he had he got caught with Gino and everyone's like, "Bruh, come on!" Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty. You're not fooling anyone. Anyway. Sure. Yeah, it was pretty sure. Like it, it was a big thing ages ago. Yeah. Like he's Gino and everyone's like, "Dude, like come, come on, on. <laughs> come on, let's come on. let's get that out of the bio." You have to put come it on, in your Alvin. bio. You probably aren't the thing you put in your bio. Yeah. This That's is true. Awesome. Very, very true. Um, what else have we got on here? So, do we want to touch on PEDs? And it's literally just says PEDs. Do all of them. Yeah. Done. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you want to, I feel like we need something more specific. Than yeah, that. that's, that's, yeah, that's it's really. Just, it's just, it's just like PDs. Cool. Like, what about PDs? Yeah, they're good so for you. Do them all. They work. Um, they work. Yeah, they're great. They're fun. <laughs> How possible is it to get farmer grade steroids and growth hormone in Australia? <laughs> well, with I believe, money, I believe there actually anything. was. I believe there actually was a sample study done though uh, on underground productions. And I think it equated to something like uh, for the entire population of samples they drew from like 66% of it was pure testosterone. Yeah. And like, that was like, then you get the cuts in it with like the canola oils or the fish oils and all the other jazz that they decided to go with it. Um, but yeah, it's like the average of the sample population was 66% testosterone. So like, um, I don't know how true this is, but there was word going around um, not too long ago when, when Rami was supposed to come to Australia and he lost something like, fuck, it was Rolly or, Rolly or Rami, lost something like 10 or 20 pounds overnight because of like the- It was all bunk. The, hey? Because it was all bunk? Not just bunk, but like going from like Kuwait where literally their national fucking yeah. equity is oil yeah. and coming to Australia where it's like, under someone's lab um yeah. yeah it was definitely a, a mismatch of quality versus what he was getting so that was a, i heard on the grapevine that was a thing that happened just on based on yeah, right. yeah did, did maybe that equates to why a lot of the australian guys are nowhere near the level of the guys over in the u.s well are they though because the guys who do get over there do pretty well what the two dudes that have been over there in the last 10 years <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, we have, like we, cool. we do have we do have a couple of like um physique, I think guys in Oz that go all right, are pro cards. Yeah, Viet like Viet Fo or yeah, Fo, yeah. Viet, is it, Viet Duan, he's a mate of mine. Yeah, yeah. he's fucking. You got a astounding physique. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, there'd be a couple there, but yeah, it, it could be a very real reason. But also, we do know that the practices uh, in the US are a lot yeah. different to here. Let's be real. I suppose too, yeah. the logistics <laughs> of getting over there as well is annoying. I could imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's pulled a lot of our guys out of even wanting to go. Well, that, for me, that's even if I was to turn pro, like I probably wouldn't want to go to the US. Yeah. Yeah. Or if I did, it would just be once, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, we do have pro shows in the Southern Hemisphere, right? So not many. Yeah. Right? There are. Uh, not well, really. Yeah, now, that, now that Thailand's opening up to it, there's the pro I was going to say, bro, out. Alex, my mate Alex, he has to go to Thailand to compete in the pro show. There's nothing yeah. in Australia. The New Zealand one's... I don't even know if that's going ahead. So oh, I thought I thought there was one in New Zealand, the one in Thailand that's opened up. That's There's it. There's one in, in Japan. Because they have the amateur Olympia now. Oh yeah. True. So in in that radius of like Southeast Asia, there are a couple shows now, but to the degree of like what America pumps out, it's nowhere near the same. Well, no, it's not the quality of the sh- I guess the show that you're gonna want, but at the same yeah. time, it's not to say that you couldn't compete in a pro show like that's closer than the US. Yeah, I guess. That's one of my goals. There one of my goals is to get over and do a, yeah, do a amateur Olympia. In yeah, especially Japan. if you're looking to qualify. Like, unless you win the show, you're not qualifying to go to the Olympia. So that's the hard part is like, if you're going to qualify on points, you need to do multiple shows. Yeah, You, yeah. you can't just do two. You need to go to the US anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fair. Uh, what else do we have? Let's see. You say you wanted to go do a, an amateur Olympia, Ben? I'd love to. Yeah, so I'm like, what's what am I? Bro, we should do that. We should do that together because I I'm really keen on doing one. Yeah, I think it'd be sick. Like, because I know, like, I was iffy on like. I mean, it's years away from. Well, I don't know. I think my goal lines progress a lot faster than I always think they will. But um, one of the processes with Dot, as I said, my next five year plan would to be to do an amateur Olympia at the very Bro, least. We should do that together. Yeah, I reckon it'd be sick. But so I did see, I did see Timmy and like, Timmy and Alex and that like. Bro, are they drilling into your internet cable or into your wall? <laughs> <laughs> Why did it go? Did it go shit again? Yeah, <laughs> just cut out mid word. But yeah, we should definitely go. It'd be sick. I'm trying to talk Tavi into it as well, just as like a, a whether he does classic or physique. That it'd just be a fucking mad experience just to get an international show on your belt. We'll just make mm. him do physique. 
<laughs> he wants to do classic. No, I know, I know, I know. He's, man, he's moving some bloody weight. Have you seen his hack score? Bruh, fucking six. seven plates on a side yeah, hack. Was it seven or six? I thought it was six and a bit. Might have been six and a biscuit. Yeah, maybe. six and a bit, and he's just fucking moving them for reps. I'm like, bruh, where did that yeah. strength come from? Yeah. Um, Not mad. Yeah. But yeah, Chris, you are going to be sick. We should definitely teed up. Because uh, I saw like uh, the Aussie guys, like Alex and Timmy McKinnon and stuff, go and do it. Um, obviously, Alex got his pro card for it, but I could just be a fucking mad experience. Even if it wasn't through like repping Australia, it was just like, let's fucking figure it out and do it. Yeah. Well, I told Alex because he wants to go and do the Olympia. So I told him, I'm like, He's like, bro, come and do the amateur Olympia when I try and qualify in the US or whatever. So maybe, maybe, maybe we'll see. I'll just make it a business expense and come just for fun. You'll, well, you'll have to come, right? Bro, yeah. we, when we say yeah, we, we can, take- we can record while we're over there. Yeah, yeah we're, 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 we're doing a, a world tour. A world tour. <laughs> Why not? Why not? It's all a business expense. We're going to live in Thailand. We'll do a prep there. Uh, keen, <laughs> keen, keen as shit. I mean, we can, we can all technically do it now. Yeah, yeah. we definitely I can do, do uni it. online. Yeah, I mean, my life's online, so that works. Why the bro diet seems to still be a thing? Because it works. Yeah, it's true. Basically, it's, uh, well, obviously, it's just generating a huge calorie deficit. And typically speaking, you know, the typical bro diet will be a 12-week duration. And the level of deficit that you need to be in is obviously super aggressive because of the time frame being so short. So the reason it is because it works and it's consistent. So, the uh, and most of, of the foods are quite digestible for a lot of people. So there's no yeah. issues. The beauty of a bro diet too was like, uh, again, from Broderick and he always says it best. The bros always had the right ideas. It's just, they didn't know why it worked. It's like, they yeah, didn't know yeah, the yeah, science yeah. behind it. Right. So it's like, yeah. uh, we've mentioned it a few times, but this is also one of the things with the bro diet. It's like, we know that, you know, rice, chicken and broccoli works and yeah. like and just changing the amounts and it was just like okay let's eat some more rice in a growth phase oh look i'm yeah. growing and getting stronger i don't, I don't calorie count <laughs> but i do measure how much i eat and I yeah eat yeah each, each, Ex- exactly each right okay, it's like, that's yeah. still calorie counting i'm having two cups of rice to this week next week i'm gonna have three cups of rice oh look at that I, I, yeah. i'm growing and adding weight and getting stronger yeah. like shit and then you know i'm like, taking away you never so, throw the baby out of the bathwater the yeah. guys that are always just like fucking i'm nothing but evidence-based like well sometimes like, sometimes it's necessary. Yeah. Sometimes the bros just like figure something out and the evidence will catch up to it. But yeah. that's not to say that it doesn't work. It's just that there wasn't, it wasn't evidence present as to why. Yeah. I mean, the negatives, the negatives of it in terms of like a year round look would be you're missing out on a ton of variety of fruit and veg. Mainly. Yeah, of course, which we know that we can now manipulate and add in yeah. to, to hit those micro counts. But it's even like, nah, bro, can't change broccoli. Can't change broccoli, broccoli, green beans. So you don't, don't need to change it, just add in. <laughs> well, so I, no. found, I found it funny people, no. talk about, people talk about like I don't flexible diet, but then they'll say things like, oh, I just substitute um, uh, fucking Kellogg's Special K for fucking rice bubbles or I'll do a cereal at this time, but it's different to this cereal or I'll do white rice instead of brown rice. Like dickhead, that's just a form of flexible eating, which is flexible dieting. <laughs> so, I, feel like it, I feel like people have come a long way now. Uh, yeah, same. <laughs> yeah. 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 Me too. I feel like it's not as bad. <laughs> As possibly as go, fuck off, fuck. Chris. The concept of something like that would just break people's brains. <laughs> just say what happened to this said again. <laughs> ah, <fuck. laughs> Bro, do you have fucking Tyler fucking down in Melbourne? Bro, I don't know what they're doing here, but but something something <laughs> not not good. Something's not good. Um, I basically said five years ago they would never be able to do that. It just break people's brains. The yeah, fact yeah, that you well, can substitute different amounts of macros. And- <laughs> this is fuck. Oh, even his facial expressions are like yeah. struggling to keep up. Oh, guys, guys um, that are listening, you need to watch this episode on YouTube yeah. purely for Jump the freeze, just purely for the freezing of Chris's face while he speaks. Yeah, yeah. my internet is not not great, but fuck, this is it's pretty bad. <laughs> Melbourne, Melbourne's gone. Give me, from, give me a sec. Actually, me a sec. Melbourne's there gone from five G there back up to uh, the down to three G. Actually, they're <laughs> yeah. using they're using fucking the Di- couple dial, wiring, mate, dial up, bro, dial up. Yeah, they got, couple, on there. they got a couple wiring and dial up still. I managed to work out to get my camera to actually record in HD. So now, like, my film quality is fucking phenomenal. Yeah, it is rather nice, anything actually. that's yeah. siphoning off the internet, I've I've turned off. So. Hopefully that fixes the issue <laughs> or somewhat improves the issue. <laughs> so, so basically he's just turned his phone off Wi-Fi. Yeah, so I already had that off. I already had that the, off. The That's porn the streaming has been turned off everyone. So there's no <laughs> yeah. more porn in the background. Yeah. And Netflix is off. Everything else. He's, he's off. been downloading at 1080p. <laughs> <laughs> that 5k quality on his new Sony. <laughs> hey man, we, we miss your old room with the TV. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm, oh. I miss the old TV, Ben. Can you get that back? <laughs> Mate, it's still there. It's just, I just don't have anyone to put it in here. It's attached on the wall. We've got that fancy, like, fucking movement swivel thing. I'm not upset, bro. I'm just disappointed. That's, all. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I sent it to you guys that night in the chat because I was like, this is how it looks when I'm playing Sony up close. I have to like lip, sit back as far as I can so I can see everything. Bro, you look like you're sitting in the front seat of the fucking cinemas. <laughs> that's how it feels. I have to physically sit in the back. Like my bed's pushed up against the back wall. So when I want to watch TV before I go to bed, I have to sit on the back wall as far as possible in the corner and then sit upright so I can like take it all in. Oh my God. Look, it's not the worst TV problem to have in the world, but I mean, it's just like, it's just not suitable. You're going to have glasses, like glasses full time in the next two years. Yeah, proper <laughs> Urkel going on. <laughs> yeah, like, and they're the thick lens ones. So it's like you look at them side on, the lens is sticking out of the frame because they're just so thick. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works, right, babe? <laughs> exactly right. All right, so junk versus measurable volume. Why do some people not understand what matters? Return to episode 13. Return to episode 17. Return <laughs> we're, to we're episode just, 3. Um, return to episode of 1 to 19. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where we just rehash this over and over again. So I think the reason is people give junk volume is because junk volume to a point will work. It's like a volume effort trade-off. So yeah. the least of it, like a lot of these coaches that are prescribed like say five sets of something or five sets, five sets, five sets, like a typical kind of bikini type of approach is they're just using a fucking sledgehammer when they can't be with them with the client there to kind of measure their level of effort. So they're kind of trading off yeah. volume for that effort. So you either can go really, really hard for a small amount of sets um, and get a really high stimulus, or you need to do more work if you're undercooking yeah. your RIR. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at least, at least if you're going to, if you're going to underperform with intensity, you can at least make up do for a it lot. by just, yeah, just fucking this triple quadruple drop set intensifier, fucking mm -hmm. adding in like every amount of compound fucking, Overloaders that you can think of, and run the rack and do your side raises like I see cunts do, and like yeah, great. It, it may work to a degree because you're just getting out sheer volume of fucking like numbers. But I mean, is it optimal? Do you want to sit in the gym and do that for fucking three hours, or just do like your session today? I was gonna bring that up actually. It was like three exercises, four exercises. Yeah, we um we don't we don't train for overly long, I think, but we do train pretty damn hard. Two sets, one top, sometimes one top, two back off, sometimes one top, one back off. And it's just... Like, what are we looking push, at today? We effort, probably had levels. two, five, maybe like 10 working sets max for the entire session. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, which, what, which is... We, we have leg curl, two sets, three sets on hack. I two did set. two sets. I, I missed the, the leg, uh, yeah, two, the single leg press because of my yeah, calf. Two sets, single leg, two adductor, two extension. Yeah. I think also to keep in mind that for me and Aaron or for both of us well we both respond quite well to lower volumes through the lower body i suppose mm -hmm. so we don't really need to you know ramp up any additional volume on that muscle group because typically like the way we're setting up our programming will be we're delving our focus elsewhere mm -hmm. so there'll always be like a specialization focus um, yeah depending on you know what muscle groups we're trying to bring up at that time so you know for me for example my quads i don't ever really need any more than five or six sets to continue yeah. to make progress so why would i do 10 12 15 yeah. sets of quads when I have other muscle groups that need priority over that. Yeah, you can recover that and add that volume into another session. Bro, my legs would be like training. fucking three times the size of my upper body if I trained them with yeah. that amount of volume. Yeah. Well, that's why, that's like, I'm kind of like converse to that is because of like having my lower back injury is that I, I couldn't push the weight that I had to. So I end up having to put a decent amount of like, not decent amount, but eh, re uh, retrospective, like it's a decent amount of leg volume in to make up for the fact that, you know, going balls to the walls will probably land in an injury. So I have to pull it back a little bit and make up for that with a few extra sets to maximize that output and actually get the volume to accrue. So though I would like to spend less time in the gym for me to get to the training intensity and the actual adaption that I want, a slight increase in volume compared to someone else who could just fucking send it for two and a half sets, three sets, and that's it. I think so what's that's important there too, man, is like a lot of people don't actually like training to failure sometimes. Yeah. yeah. You know, so if you're someone that is that way, like you don't have to train that way. You can still get effective results. Like Ben saying there, to trading off a bit of extra sets as opposed yeah. to really applying a high level of effort hmm. with a close proximity to failure. Because if you are going to be applying a high level of effort, it needs to be within a close proximity to failure. You can't just do two sets and be like, oh yeah, I've about three or four reps in the tank and expect to progress. You know, you need to take those sets really, really close to failure. Uh, in order to be able to get the same growth response you would from lesser volume. So um, some people just like doing more volume and you can yeah. do that, but 
there's no point doing lower volumes unless you're going to be able to take that set where it needs to go. And that's something you kind of see like the pro guys, like they, they get away with it now. Like the more, the more you kind of learn, the more, the more you realize like the bros will go and might do three or four exercises and fucking every set and every session is literally too pure failure and nothing else. But that's what that's just how they like to train you. Like that their, their training intensity is nothing but balls to the walls. So again, it's one of those things where the bros didn't exactly get it wrong. They just didn't know why they were doing it and why it worked. Yeah, effort just, still underpins everything. Effort yeah. with your diet, effort with your training. They're the two biggest, biggest things to drive progression. Yeah, and all they knew is they train really hard, eat a lot of food, they get bigger yeah. and stronger and they recovered. It's like, okay, well, this works. I'm just going to keep doing it. Yeah, if it's literally. Not broken, if it's not broken, why fix it, right? Yeah. That was actually, that was on the, it was on the bro chat, um, the bro chat podcast. I was talking about it. It's like, um, it's always funny watching, listen to Fawad refer to people as the science guys because they track some data and information. <laughs> like, oh yeah. The science guys will say this. And he's just like, you know, you just get, I think it was on the live one they did in, in Texas where they were just saying like, um, there's just things you learn as a bodybuilder that you did that, that work. And so you associate that with the success. So yeah. it's just creating your own internal bias or confirmation that this was the thing that did it. So it might be like, I spaced out my dose four times a week or I did micro doses or I did this type of rice or this type of fish or whatever. And because they weren't exactly tracking the data, it was more so just change in increments. They're like, oh, this was definitely what worked and what did it. So I'm going to keep doing that. And it's just like that internal confirmation they just created for themselves that it wasn't far off. It was just that they didn't actually understand why it was happening. Yeah, well, you're going to learn a lot of things in the pursuit of gains. So when it comes yeah. to I mean there's always there's there's always the argument to be made for being in the trenches and making actually or learning yeah. hands on. Yeah, practice. which is important but I think where people go wrong with that is because something worked for them, they try and give it to other people and say yeah, this that, works yeah, for me. Yeah, That's when it becomes yeah. a problem. Yeah, yeah, whereas you can turn around and say this worked for me, try it. If it works for you, cool. And if it doesn't, well, sorry, but, but not like least... this is the only way, bro. Yeah, like you, you have you have a, a framework, a ground, like you know, grounds to work from. And it's like, okay, well, you know, if you're doing one end of the spectrum being like that's we're doing, you know, two sets, high effort, low volume, like cool. And it doesn't work. It's like, okay, well, we've tried that. So now what's the next thing? You might try like a medium approach where maybe a little less effort, a little more volume. And it's like, cool, that works. And if that doesn't work, cool. I'm going to go with a ton of less effort, but I'm going to go with a ton more volume. And it's like, ah, huh, well, look at that. There's my sweet spot. So it's like, cool. Like everyone's different. Everyone responds differently. We you don't need unique. to be married to an approach like indefinitely either. You know, like yeah. for example, like that lowish volume type of approach to training may serve you quite well in the initial phases of your training. You may make some great progress, but eventually you may need to find, you may run out of progression runway. So you may need to actually, you know, bring around progression by a different means. So you may need to start going through periods where you're adding weapon sets, finding different ways to increase volume. Because again, too, with getting really, really strong, like there's only so strong you can get before, you know, you you kind of run the risk of injury uh, with each individual set. So you may need to find a different avenue of progression uh, in order to go down. So keep in mind that it's a framework and that, that framework is always adaptable. But just because say me and Aaron train it with, with lower volumes for certain muscle groups doesn't mean you need to do the same. You know? Yeah. And a good example, I think that will be like my progression this week, for example, it's like I hit four plates on a hack for 10 last week. So for me, the up 10 reps being the upper end of that rep range that I'm, you know, that I'm targeting. So it's like, okay, time to up the weight. So, you know, up the weight and hit six reps with probably one to two reps left in the tank. So cool. It means next week I'm going to hit, try and aim for eight reps. And hopefully that's still one to two reps in the tank, maybe. And then, you know, maybe that third week provided everything's feeling good and we're moving along. I can hit that 10 reps at, you know, sort of four plates or four and a half plates. And that's the upper end of that. And it's like, cool, up the weight, go back down to six. (laughs) It's like, I don't have to increase the weight to increase progression or to gain progression i can increase my reps for that particular exercise and that's my gauge on how i'm feeling and you know i might walk in next week and be like if you put on you know four and a half and hit six again i'd be like i just felt like shit <laughs> like it happens like mm-hmm. you know, these these yeah. things happen so look at the long long-term picture not the the short a good example for me today was my calf as well so we had like a single leg press that we've had in for the last few weeks and the constriction of my my um uh, my SPD knee sleeve was kind of causing a little bit of pain through the calf. So I skipped that and just added an extra working set or two to my leg extensions instead. So still like a similar amount of work. And I still took that set in terms of relative effort close to failure, um, which was still good. But you have to understand that, you know, you don't always need to, I suppose, you know, do that exercise, you know, even if you are going to kind of you know, take that, or if you have to kind of train around it, you know, there's always going to be little injuries and niggles that are going to crop up. 
Um, and if you need to train around them, realize that you can train around them. You just need to substitute the, the volume somewhere else. Exactly. That Be is. smart. Yeah. That's, a, that's something that, that I learned pretty early on, I guess would say, but <laughs> understanding that as long as you're working on recovering the injury, there are so many other movements that you can do around that certain problem and still accrue overload, increase volume, like again, back to the back, but still there were so many periods where that was just simply wasn't allowed or diagnosed or recognized to be able to deadlift squat, put any sort of load through there. So it was like, all right, I can't do those things. Finding other movement patterns through my knee, through extensions, through flexions that I could get and accrue volume elsewhere. Like it's still, it's still, you don't have, if there's an injury or something limiting, you don't have to just go, well, fuck, I can't train back today or I can't train legs today because I have this one little niggle. You can find other ways to hit that movement and get that contraction and just program accordingly, just adjust and move around it. Well, you can then look at things like being in the lengthened position, mid-range, shortened position, which ones affect you, you know, is it affecting affecting you on the concentric, the eccentric, there's so much that goes into it. And again, this is why we say get a coach. And when we say get a coach, we mean hi, Ben, because we're full. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all for this plugging. Get going. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's really, there's a lot that goes into this sort of stuff. And when it comes to, you know, not just the volume uh, debate, but also like, then you look at exercise selection, you look at there's so much that goes into all this sort of stuff. So um, that's why sometimes it is better to have a, a second pair of eyes, you know, being a coach that um, can sort of guide you through this. Cause it's, you know, like myself and Chris write pretty much our own programming and run it by the coaches and the coaches like, yep, yeah, cool. Sweet. I agree. Um, you know, but we couldn't do that if we weren't, you know, at the level that we're at, if you're a newbie trying to write your own programs, like, you know, not a bad thing, like cool, but definitely have it looked, looked over as well. Yeah. That's like something I've been marketing or well, not marketing because that sounds gimmicky, but um trying to encourage is even if you don't want to coach, like I offer one-on-one -on -one consults where yeah. you get an hour of my time just to simply talk it over. And it might not be that I agree with what you're doing, but I can see where you're coming from or what you've like, why you said those things. Um, one of my clients booked me in just to simply look at a program he wrote for someone else. Yeah. So rather than talk about like his programming, it was just an extra block of time to go over why he was going to do something. And we looked at what the client actually enjoyed, what the person wanted to do, um, reasons why he programmed the way he did, what exercise selection he went through, number of days or uh, frequency and accruity of the muscles he was training. So just broke that all that, all that down. And then um, following that fucking uh, that template I sent you guys, we went through that and why, why we wouldn't look at that as to how we're programming and what else we actually look for in terms of like volume metrics. Um, so yeah, even if it, even if it's not coaching that you want, it's probably cheaper and more effective. If you just want to chat and run over something, throw me a fucking uh, book in once a month. I think it's like 150 bucks and you get literally an hour of my time to just do nothing but talk about what you're doing or what you program or, you know, whatever. It could be a fucking psychology for like, yeah, but that, that way it's at least someone's looking over what you're trying to do. And it's not just like, oh, I'm just going to do 40 sets of chests. It's like, cool, man, but you don't have to. Like, we, can, we can get you doing less and get more out of it. All but my clients so far. It's Monday. <laughs> yeah, well, literally all my clients so far have been surprised at taking back their training and getting better results. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, a lot well, of people train too much to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah, you know, I gotta do three hours in the gym, bro. Junk volume. I gotta do three hours in the gym. Yeah, anyone that like gauges their metric off like the time they spend in the gym, forget that. I only train noise. for six hours a day, so I have to. <laughs> I remember, I think the fastest ever training session I've done was when I was a PT, I was probably second year uni, maybe working in a studio, and the studio owner being the little gym bro that he is. Um, was just like, yeah, man, like come in, we'll do a session together. And this is when I was like 75 kilos. Like, I don't think I could bench 60 at the time. So, who freaked so last week, pretty much <laughs> <laughs> at, the, at, the end, at the end of my last, end of my last cut. Um, then, <laughs> you know, we're like, we're gonna, uh, he's like, yeah, man, we're gonna, we're gonna train, we'll do some upper body stuff. I'm like, cool. So, so like, superset, like bench and like probably dumbbell rows or something. Like, no, it was a lap pull down. Um, and then moved into like, uh, it was a seated row into dumbbell incline press or something like that. And then just a bicep tricep exercise, three, literally six, six exercises, three supersets. We were done in 20 minutes. <laughs> 25 <Fuck minutes. yeah>. <laughs> I couldn't, I, I was fucked. I couldn't, I, my, my, my chest, my back, everything was just killing me for four days. You held so, an antagonist, protagonist section. Yeah, well, Love man, it. It, was just, it was just one of those things. It's just like freaking, you can, you want to measure the success of a workout based on time yet, you know, which way would you look at it? Would it be the shorter amount of time you're in there <laughs> or the longer time you're in there? Like, you know, which, which one's more beneficial, right? Oh, yeah. I asked the same question to be in the sack. Yeah. 
Yeah, and the, the argument always as long as you got time. there, how it doesn't matter how long it took. Like, if you're always, not first, you're last. Exactly, and you're there for a good time, not a long time. Hey, so if you climax at 30 seconds, my job's done after 31. I'm pretty good. much this. This I'm this out. this is literally a sprint, not a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to burn through my calories. <laughs> nah, ATP only. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's well, it for- I think we flogged the fuck out of that horse again. Yeah, again, and we'll probably do it again next week. We'll do it again next week. Yeah, because it'll come up. Did you get any questions, Benny? Um, no, just Isabel, Isabel trying to be a smart ass. I think I asked too late in the day. Yeah, standard. And yeah, I always. didn't ask anyone. I yeah. apologize. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> look, we're leaving it. We're leaving it up to Fuad over here because Fuad does it in the bro chat. So it's now Scaffy's job. Standard. Should we start putting telling people on YouTube to start putting them on the YouTube channel? Yes. Yes. Should actually look at that because I actually don't have access to that account. It's not mine. It's um the guy, the edit, the guy who does all the editing for the podcast. So it's like he <laughs> created the account. So it's kind of like oh, I should probably get the details for that. <laughs> What's my bank details? <laughs> no, I, I, I know that actually. That's a people will scare the shit out of me when they know their bank details off by heart. Whether it be Man, a that, credit card, that's a strange a, fucking five psychopath. Yeah, cre- credit that. credit card numbers and like you know if they know their BSB and account numbers off by heart, I get worried. I'm like, bruh. Like, yeah, guys, if you know your if you know your credit card number, send it through to us and we'll have a judge. judge for you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell you if it's effective. We'll tell you if it's a good card or not. <laughs> Let us know how much is in the account as well. Uh, that's a joke. We're not fraudulently <laughs> removing money from your account. Only joke. Bankers. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are doing. Pumps are tough. <laughs> twenty dollars is twenty dollars. Um, all right. Well, let's move on to shame of life. All right. Excellent. Let's do it. Why not? So, first one. What should you never whisper to someone as they fall asleep? Uh, someone's watching you. Some, well, I mean, some things watching you. I'm say, watching you. Yeah, I was gonna say you're, you're <laughs> the one whispering in their ear. I'm bro. watching you. <laughs> no, but like more. I was coming from more of like a paranormal type of theme. You know, like. I wonder if you could make someone go to the bathroom by saying, like, oh, think of waterfalls. <laughs> like, oh, fuck, you're all comfy. You got to get up and go take a piss. My dick is in my hand. Oh, well, I mean, depends who it is. I like, was going to say, depends who it is. <laughs> well, if it's my dad, that's a little bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, yeah, no, nah, that's too much. <laughs> leave that, we'll leave that one for Ben. <laughs> I think Ben takes the cake on that one. <laughs> Which <superhero>? winner? <laughs> <laughs> Which superhero is most likely to cry after climax? Uh, oh. I feel like Superman. Nah, yeah, I don't know. Oh. just man's having a real oh, bitch fit. He just actually no. Just, Batman, no, Batman is having an emotional breakdown. The kid was an adolescent without fucking parents who witnessed them both die. He is having so an emotional. Superman. He's having an emotion. He didn't watch him die. He was like, a- oh, basically they shipped he got, him off. He got replacement fun. parents like a week later. Batman was like on his own with a billion dollar empire for like the rest. Yeah, so of what's the he crying about? That emotional neglect. Fucking yeah, Clark Kent's yeah. having to fucking throw He's, hay bales, mate. He that repressed anger that he only lets out by fucking fighting bad guys at night in a cape and outfit. We would put someone in an institution for that if that was in real life. Well, That's I guess true. the question would be: Are we assuming after climax being sex or like yeah. whacking one off? Well, he's he's clearly whacking off to beating people up, so that's that's well, a given. Like, yeah, I was going to say, if, it, if if it's sex, I'd almost go the Flash because he'd be so lucky to get laid. Hey, no that's way! True. What do you mean the Flash? Like be, before when he first gets his girlfriend, you not remember how much it, like he loses his shit when he gets when he first gets a girlfriend. So it's like imagine the first time yeah, he gets fair. laid, like. I mean, it would if, be, if, it would if, be if he's already a nerd, he's going <laughs> to yeah, quick. It'd be very, imagine very quick. what the Flash is like shooting quick. <laughs> So anyone who suffers from premature ejaculation, just know the flash will come before you. <laughs> he is first at everything. <laughs> He's already done and dusted. It definitely not all. It's definitely not all the cracked up yeah. to be. That's for sure. And you definitely haven't seen me and Flash in the same place at the same time. <laughs> that isn't an issue that I have. I mean, there was this one time. Um, <laughs> a movie well, that you're should... just gone like a flash <laughs> after it's finished. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm done. <laughs> a movie that should be immortalized with that well-known trademark protected range of toy building blocks. What? What? A movie that should be immortalized with that well-known trademark protected range of toy building blocks. So what I think the fuck like, does that mean? Think like yeah, Legos. Legos. Yeah, like Lego. So think of a movie that should be immortalized with Lego. Like oh, Harry Potter. They, they've they've got Harry has. Potter Lego. Yeah, but 
it's great. I actually have it on my Switch. Yeah, same. I agree, Chris. I agree entirely. <laughs> Man, we've got to upgrade your internet, bro. Yeah. <laughs> what part of Melbourne are you in? It's a business expense, bro. Just change fucking providers, yeah? <laughs> Is there flooding in that area recently? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> so the sun's out. I don't know what's going on, to be honest. I don't know if they're drilling into the wall and they've managed to fuck my internet or something. What's going on? Anyway, we missed the whole part you were talking about after the Harry Potter because Harry Potter's already got Lego. I said, uh, yeah, I know. I play it on my Switch. No, oh, there you go. Mm. Hey, you're going to have to go like something something messed up like Freddy vs. Jason or some shit. The Godfather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> imagine, <laughs> imagine, imagine your kids replicating that scene. <laughs> The, the, whole, the horse's head <laughs> as a Lego piece. Yeah. <laughs> the scene Goals. where he just like gets ambushed at the very end and everyone's just got their Tommy guns out and he just yeah, actually yeah. sprayed in his car. Like it's that's the like, scene that they replicate. There's just like this little car, like toy yeah. with just holes in it. Yeah. And, and you've red got it on the windows. <laughs> yeah. You've got to put together the blood spots with the Lego. Now, what about Saw? Yeah, Saw would be pretty brutal. Yes. Saw would be pretty brutal. Yeah, I think anything like Freddy versus Jason or like yeah. Freddy... Any, oh, Hostel. Any horror. Oh, Hostel. You've got to set up... Oh, set bro, up Hostel the, is fucked up. You've yeah. got to set up the fucking murder scenes, like the part where oh. he slashes his Achilles tendons and he thinks he can get out. Oh, yeah, true. Oh. Texas Chainsaw that, Massacre. Like, that's yeah, gruesome. Yeah, another one. Nah, that's not for me, dog. <laughs> Ben's like, nah, I'm straight out. up not for me. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I just, I just tell him to just slice my throat. Like, fuck it. I'm out. That's it. You win. <laughs> it's not a game I'm playing. You win. What was the the wax? Was it Wax Museum? No. What was oh, it House called? Of wax with House Paris of wax. Hilton? Yeah, that one. That one. <laughs> God, she's trash. Oh, she's still around today. She's got like a perfume and stuff. Yeah, she. As long as it's not a scent of her, I'm, I don't care. Well, doesn't she have like a TV Fucking show and shit not. too? And oh no, really? Bro, how do we let people like that get famous? Seriously, like, money and sex what tapes. What the fuck is wrong with the society? Yeah, sex tapes, sex tapes, and money. Uh, I think Ben, we should release that sex tape of yours. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens. It's, it's more like a trailer. That's how long it goes for. <laughs> We're saving it for a rainy yeah. day, just when we get desperate. <laughs> <laughs> when when Ben starts making money, we need to blackmail him. <laughs> Remember that time? <laughs> <laughs> Any fame is good fame. That was yeah, right? that was the that was the first question we're talking about, right? You, you were standing over me while I was asleep. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> the cat camcorder, <laughs> the old school one. I hope he doesn't the see me. Bit of, bit of pulse. <laughs> yeah, I hope he doesn't see me. <laughs> like not even trying to hide. As a <laughs> 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 Just holding a leaf above your head. You can't see me. <laughs> it's camouflage. I can camouflage <laughs> gear. <laughs> Gaspari camouflage. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Ben, you need to get yourself some Gaspari kit before yeah. you come down. Yeah, join the oh. club. I mean, we join do have club. enough that we could probably donate one. I've got like yeah, one still wrapped in plastic. It. I can just give it to him. Just send it. Um, what word or phrase would the most adored fictional English nanny use to describe masturbation? So basically, what would nanny fine? No, is that, fine? Talking about Mary Mr. Poppins? Sheffield. Oh, I was thinking Mary Poppins, but I just wanted to piss Chris Poppins. off. I just wanted to give Chris an aneurysm. Uh, <laughs> um, all I can Chris. think of is Mr. Sh- all I can think is Mr. Sheffield. <laughs> so uh, what would what would word would they use to describe masturbation? Children, you word or all, phrase? You're doing it all wrong, children. <laughs> uh, sing- I'm thinking singular word, singular word. Yeah. So word. Well, it says word or phrase. Wax exemplary. Pop it. Exemplary. Pop it. Pop it. Pop it. Hello, pop it. The Hello, Poppet. Hello, Poppet. I, right? I don't think they'd call it that though. <laughs> like it's a good it's a good accent for like three words, but no. Yeah. So what what word or phrase would they use to describe masturbation? Uh, um I don't know, what do they fucking call it? Surely the pommies have a name for it. Play the tinky winky. <laughs> tinky winky. <laughs> tinky winky. I was thinking something to do with bollocks, like, but I can't think of. I think, I think Chris has been listening to my conversations with myself at night. You got it right. Tinky Hang winky. on. If any boy is going to play with his tinky winky. <laughs> I say that whilst I look in the mirror. Or of that giant fucking TV. <laughs> it's actually on reflection view. I was going to say, it. he's just recording himself. Yeah. It's That's how he got the myself. sex tape. <laughs> uh... Um, oh, hello. Right. Right. Here we go. What expressions do the British have for masturbation? <laughs> this, is a, this is a Reddit. This is a Reddit thread. <laughs> here we go. Um, oh, God, fuck, come on. There we go. Uh, <laughs> pulling the pud. What does that even mean? <laughs> pulling the plug? 
Pulling the pud, oh, P-U-D. Oh, bah- God. <laughs> bashing the bishop. <laughs> Banging one out. Cranking yeah, one off. Standard. Uh, <laughs> plucking the one string banjo. <laughs> What's that uh, I've heard that before. Yeah, I've heard, I've, I've heard, heard that. I've heard that. that one <laughs> yeah, same. Chris, yeah, Chris is just. Hey, Chris. <laughs> just thinking. Yeah. Uh, your internet connection is unstable. Well, there you go. No shit. That's what we've heard it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can hear your internet connection. We can't even hear you. <laughs> what else you got, Ben? Maybe I do Anything the next good? one on my phone. Stroking your Pope. <laughs> <laughs> that one's good. Yeah, that, that's a, that's interesting for an English one. Yeah, now Wave, no waving. Strong. What about uh, waving the wand? Waving I mean, the wand. Yeah. I mean, fighting the one-eyed trouser snake. Yeah, I mean, that's old. We know that. Lame. Yeah. Come on, Ben. Hey, Fuck I'm just going what they've said on here, all right? <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah. move, just what move, they said. Just what they move, said. Move, moving along. Moving along. Playing the so, pink fretboard. What the fuck is a fretboard? Google it. It, would, it, would, it must Google make it. more sense if we were. You're on, you're, you're on Google. Fretboard. Oh, the fretboard. is The the fingerboard is an important uh, component of most stringed instruments. So it's like the where all the chords are on like your guitar. Oh, right. Anyway, moving along. Anyway, moving <laughs> on. So this is a discussion question. Rats, you fought the law and the law won. What tough prison name are you going to give yourself to keep the mean prison bullies off your back? Ben's gone for Ben 10, 100%. He's gone for Ben 10. Uh, I was about to say, because I can take 10 guys at once, and I was like, yeah, that's, that's going to sound way worse. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> say that out loud. <laughs> In prison, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, not what we were going Come here, big fella. Could work to your benefit. Uh, um, I don't even have a name. You just walk in and do you know who the fuck I am? <laughs> you keep saying that. that yeah, that just, yeah, literally just use the phrase. Do you know who the fuck I am? Do you know who the fuck I am? I'm Billy Kimber. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off to the races. I'm off to the races. <laughs> just fucking yeah. just walk in, flail on your arms, get beat up by everyone straight away. <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck is that? Like, you fucking not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. What would be an actual an actual name? Like, really these days? Like, does it I'd really probably matter? just go in there and keep my head down and not try and fight everyone or make a name yeah. for myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they're they're the ones that You're probably such get, a bitch. Yeah, I was gonna say they're, they're, the ones, <laughs> they're the ones that probably get targeted and bashed first. Uh. <laughs> oh no, boys! I dropped the soap. <laughs> uh. Don't come get me. <laughs> Like, I don't see, I cannot think of a name cool enough. Yeah, it's kind of like enough. literally like what what would be a name that intimidates? It's kind of like Ghost Rider. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to get bashed. You get for bashed. Having you name. get bashed for yeah, having any name. I say it, that's that cool. I think I'm going to get bashed for having. <laughs> Come on, guys! It's a cool name. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ghost ride my dick, bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ghost ride these nuts. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of a name. Okay, I'm, stick, I'm, I'm sticking with Ghost Rider. <laughs> right, I'm still sticking with that. <laughs> Be like, see, in my head, it's like, what names do you like? Not sound scary, but actually just sound kind of cool. And you think it kind of moves like Conan the Barbarian, but then it's Top kind gun. of like, yeah, but Maverick. <laughs> I'm going to call myself Maverick. <laughs> Maverick. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, what names are cool? Like, there's not. There's not much. <laughs> Call yourself Dom Toretto. <laughs> Look, guys, it's really, I'm really about family. It's really yeah. about family. I'm all about family here. <laughs> you family. ain't with me, you're against me. I live my life a quarter, a quarter mile, mile at a time. Yeah, pretty much. So you're in doesn't prison. It, you can't move on the five feet. It doesn't matter if you time. Doesn't matter if you uh, win by an inch or a mile. <laughs> what about uh, short shift and double clutching? <laughs> what about Chris Benoit? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
uh, we're not touching that. Yeah. <laughs> <We're> not... <laughs> the the older generation of wrestling fans will know those ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ray Mysterio, <laughs> Ray Mysterio, Big Show. There you go, Big Show. Big show. <laughs> I feel like you're still show. getting bashed for being Big Show. 100. <laughs> percent so I'm gonna go out with a bang. I'll call myself the making thing is because you got a big dick, so they want to stay away from you. <laughs> yeah. Why are you called the Big Show when you come find out? Well, fucking find out, <laughs> man. You keep running your mouth, you're gonna find out. <laughs> yeah, bad. There you go, Big Show. I'm going, I'm going with Big Show. <laughs> <laughs> And Ben's just going with Ben 10. So I know. Hopefully yeah. I'm too pretty to go in prison. I can stay out. There, you'll be the first one to. <laughs> <laughs> um, what That's is why your you're the first one? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's the mustache. What is your biggest fear and what would you change about it to make it immediately unscary? Man, I'm scared of everything. Yeah, that's fair. Uh... You are a bit of a pansy. I'm very scared of flying, actually. Yeah, I still find that really weird. Mm, I know statistically it makes no sense, but I'm scared of flying. No, I'm man. Of You're allowed to have a fear. Like, it's, it's okay. I mean, we judge sorry, you. Sorry, I'm not a whatever. fucking... Sorry, I'm not a hero with no fears. I mean, I do. Uh, have, I'm sure I do have fears. I just really can't think of one right now. Like, why I don't they're... do much to find out. <laughs> <laughs> man, sure. I'm scared of everything, to be honest. So I wish I could change that. I think I've got three. I've got three that I can think of. The first two, the f- first two are logical. The third one is more like a anxiety of future things. Yep. Um, first one, I was like eight years old. We used to have like my parents live on property, and we used to have this bird cage, and it was like a well built bird frame, but there was no like slab base or anything. It was just like straight, just on dirt, hmm. and all their food, like we'd feed them whatever they had to be fed, and it just always accumulated just shit on the ground, and so like overgrow with fucking whatever just be full of weeds and stuff that had come through and they eat it you're scared anyway, of birds aren't you hey you're scared no of birds. no I don't give a fuck about the birds I was my job to feed them so I went into the bird cage to feed them and clean out their water bowl and shit and get rid of the shit and I looked down and I thought someone had left some old hosing in the like on oh, the floor shit. and I was like oh that's whatever and I felt it I felt it slide under my leg and I looked down and it was a fucking Eastern brown snake. And I've been shit terrified of snakes ever since. I was like eight years old. I backed out of there like real slow. Lock- I made sure to lock the door. So I locked the door just to, you know. Were the birds still in there? Yeah. They didn't even notice. Like usually yeah. they go off, they see snakes. There's a cockatoo and a parrot. Um, and fuck me. I've never- You're on your own, boys. Yeah. <laughs> boys. With the door back in. <laughs> It was like watching a cartoon because fucking dad's trying to get the words out of me because I was like screaming back at the house. And dad's trying to get the words out of him. I'm just like, uh, there's <laughs> the thing in the uh, cage. And he just gets the axe and just fucking boop. Like, okay, cool. Sweet dad, my hero. <laughs> so, sort of. So what's, so what's the second one? Um, second one. <laughs> second one is public speaking. Oh, fair. That's, that's, that's a common one. Fair. Like it's something that I want to yeah, yeah, something I wanna overcome for a lot of like work in the future. Obviously, like it's just something I have to get over. Um, mm. But it's weird because I've played the Suncorp Stadium been in charge of captaining teams of footy team stuff never been an issue yeah, it's not the same yeah put me in front of like people directly looking at me and i was just like mm, yeah that sucks i think yeah. it's different because like your flow when you're like playing a game of footy like you're so engrossed in the game that you don't mm. even realize oh, the yeah. around you got no idea what's going on around you yeah. yeah yeah that would be it um third one is mm, i guess it's, it's like a more like a future thing but third one i have a massive fear of failure yeah fair like that's just but more like, like an internal thing in my head that just makes me do stuff. It's like I don't like that idea of failing. Yeah, but I feel like that. I feel like that one's probably more intrinsic to, and probably more common between a lot of us. Like yes. Being yeah, like I, I think I think with the question, I guess anyway, it's kind of like, what is it that you what what do you fear, and what could you do to change it? Like make what can you immediately do to change that fear? It's kind of like that kind of fear is like probably going to be like everlasting <laughs> yeah yeah i'm gonna milk that thing for a long time yeah, I, yeah, I never like, thought this gonna... game would get this serious honestly. yeah well i mean <laughs> we, 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 we gotta we gotta go deep on some of these questions you know what i mean i feel like it's going to be more of a um what's the word like a an external type an extrinsic fear. fear yeah yeah like a you know just a, a, sh- a shitty common one yeah. <laughs> snakes, the public, spe- public speaking yeah the public speaking one's actually really good i remember i used to have that fear but again i done so much public speaking now it doesn't really bother me at all like you get nervous yeah but it's not scary yeah you know what i mean i guess there's a, that sort of difference but i think it's like fuck fears man it's like i, I couldn't even think of, i think fear would be like if i was like in, in a river or 
with a crocodile or something like that, I'd be fucking yeah, shit yeah. myself. You know what I mean? Like I've seen <laughs> fucking, I've seen some Stack shit. Stack in the river just starts hanging out with the crocodile. Just pat, what's up, boys? How yeah, you doing? Well, I mean, that's how you it's get over shit. that. That's how I would get over that fear. <laughs> it's that or die. <laughs> so, yeah, um, you know, I've been in some situations where it's kind of like, like spiders, snakes don't scare me. Been out in the water and there's been shark in the water, which was fun. That was a that was a good time. It was a two two and a half meter great white that was in the water when we were out surfing, <laughs> and it was just like we were all like there was about ten of us, and I was actually telling the story to someone the other day. We were literally you could hear the sirens on the beach go off. So for those that are listening, Jan Jack Beach, there was probably about three or four years ago. I think it was a two and a half meter great white just cruising around, and then down towards Ocean Grove, which there was a shark attack yesterday actually. Um, they the sirens are going off and you, you see all these people in the shallows just getting out of the water and there's about eight to ten of us and we're all sort of just looking at each other and we could see the siren like we could hear all the people and the sirens and the helicopter was starting to come over and we're like oh fuck like we could be in trouble here and we're trying to like what do we do because we don't know where it is <laughs> so it's like you don't want to start paddling because the shark's going to be attracted to the splash so as soon as your foot your feet and your hands break the water that's what the sh- attracts the shark usually so we're like okay what do we do so we're trying to call everyone in because we were fairly close you know we're like coming closer coming closer and we formed this line so that we made ourselves look bigger than the shark and just we had like our hands our feet on the board we were kind of like this <laughs> sitting on the board we're like and then you just see this fin pop up and you're like, it was, would have been two two meters away from us like two and a half meters away from us and you just we shit ourselves we're like what the fuck is that like holy hell and this fin was huge like i, I couldn't tell you how big this fin looked so we're just thinking of how big the shark was we're like fuck this and we've just, yeah. So like, we've all basically like linked like hands on re- like ribs effectively. And we're all like, the ends are turning. We're trying to turn the boards around towards the shore <laughs> in like one big group. <laughs> and we just basically charge into the water. Like just every wave we're catching back into the shore. Was that, it, was actually, it was actually just an episode of Simpsons where Bart for, <laughs> swims to the beach with a shark fin on his back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just someone kind of laps around yeah, him. Fucking, like we, we, snorkel we, underwater. Yeah. It, 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 I wish that was the case, <laughs> but it's like we, when you see the actual like fin sticking out, you're like, yeah, fuck. <laughs> like I feel like I could have yeah, reached that's out. Fucking terrifying. Yeah, fuck I feel that. like I, like I could have like almost reached out. Like if my arm was like literally double the length, I would have touched it. It would be like, no, nah, fuck that. <laughs> oh, so and you couldn't that. see like how deep. Like you couldn't just see the, the body under the water. You could just see the fin because the water was so dark. We're like, nah, fuck this. <laughs> you just see a sp- me, dog. yeah. We just see a sp- and then it just drops. That's the scary part. It comes up. So, you know, it's like up high, it's shallow. It's probably like looking at us and then it just drops down under and we're like, fuck, where did it go? <laughs> Do I want some brown meat today or some white Yeah, meat? yeah. We're like, what's going on? So we just you see us like, takes us like 10, just 10 minutes. Just break someone to... off the chain and leave them stuck there. <laughs> yeah, well it's, like, well, it's like the end guys had to paddle. So it's like to turn us around. So it's like, it took us like 10 minutes to spin like 10 surfboards around in one hit. And then we just fucking took off. The like, shark's fucking. like, oh, my, mo- my meal's on rotisserie. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> well. Which one do I want today? <laughs> yeah, that was, that was good times. But I mean, you, you have that sort of shit. You kind of don't really scare too easily. So it's like... But yeah, I mean, crocodiles scare the shit out of me. I think if I was on a bank or something and I remember being in Cairns up north, they're like, in like Port Douglas and stuff. And they're like, yeah, don't like go down to the beach early in the morning or like late at night when it's dark and you can't see anything. It's like, why? Because there's crocodiles. It's like, shit. They, they will come up. They <laughs> yeah, like they, yeah, and like you, yeah. you walk down to like, you know, through the grass to the beach and you're looking in the grass. You're like, is there anything else? <laughs> like, what the fuck's going on? If it's on the be beach, fucking I, careful. Yeah, if it's on the beach, I can see it. That's okay. <laughs> but if it's in the grass, I can't see shit. Like it just jump at you and fucking kill you. Like that's probably a, the only fear I really had. <laughs> Yeah, I would say flying and snakes. Let me go with that. Yeah. I think snakes yeah. snakes are a very real one because where I grew up, the, the like the property, it's like we had a lot of snakes, whether that's yeah, pythons, so, king yeah. browns, like yeah, a lot we, of snakes. So I know how fucking terrifying going face to face with a yeah. seven foot long taipan can be. Yeah. Bro, they are fucking territorial and they are scary as fuck because they like, they will literally sit up at you and oh, it's just, Actually, yeah, that shit freaks me the fuck out. It down my spine. Yeah, they're fucking ridiculously intimidating. Yep, completely fair and legitimate, I think. So, every fart sounds like a scream, or every scream sounds like a fart. Well, that changed the tone. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving on to something a little bit more fun now. Um, I'm going every scream sounds like a fart. Well, I guess now this would be the tricky part. What dictates a scream? Like, are we talking like, you know, 
painful like real scream or are we talking just like imagine know, like, imagine a yelp, the, like a yelp <laughs> imagine the sound of when i pulled out my pants and a woman's in my penis that's the scream you're going for yeah fair it's more like um, a gasp uh, then yeah, i'm going, like a, oh is that small <gasps> Yeah. So that counts that's as a stream, shock. or that's just a gasp? <laughs> well, okay, that's just a gasp. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, like what are we talking here? Because if we're talking like you know, you drop your axe and the woman actually screams, then I can understand that. <laughs> so Holy we can, humanity! Yeah, so we can use that as a measure. <laughs> if that's the case, then I'm going. Every scream sounds like a fart because I don't scream <laughs> that often, so that's okay. <laughs> but I'm if we're go. going the other way and it's just a gasp, like you know, a, a forced sound almost. Yeah. I'd- I agree. I agree, Chris. I am so agreeing with everything you just said. <laughs> the look at his face because he just knows his internet cut out. Fucking internet, bro. Go again. What'd you say? Uh, I should forget. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't eaten in like four hours, so. Yeah, fuck that. You're going catabolic. Yeah, I'm going catabolic. Actually, when I got home, I quickly whacked a bowl of. 50 grams of checks. No, of uh, Crispex. Oh, nice. old Crispex. But yes, we've got some Greek say? yogurt waiting for me after we finish this podcast. Yeah, so until then, every fart sounds like a scream or every scream sounds like a fart. What do you want? Yeah, no, every every uh, every scream sounds like a fart because yeah, I, um, I don't scream much. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I'm going to go every fart sounds like a scream just to be funny. Yeah, right. You would do that too, you weirdo. Yeah. Yeah. And then because like, then everyone just starts to look at me like, what the fuck just happened? What is yeah. wrong with y'all? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last one, I reckon, because we're going through a few of these. But if you were a wrestler, what would your choice of ring entrance music be? Oh. <sighs> Man, we suck at it. Ben couldn't even think of a song the last time that we fucking... <laughs> like yeah, a single is, song. Yeah, but I mean, this might be a little bit better because it's wrestling. He likes wrestling. So at least, you know. I mean, like, like is debatable. I, I watched it as a kid. Well, yeah, we all did. I mean, the, the, yeah. it's okay. I loved wrestling as a kid, even though it was fake. It's fine. <sighs> but what song would you? What song would you have? Yeah, you need you need something. You need something. I reckon I'd go. Um, hell yeah! From um, don't you, you pick know. my song? Yeah, I don't fucking, you pick my I song? Go, I would go that as an entry. That'd be six entry song. Yeah, so it is actually. I'd be like maybe Queen. Another one bites the dust. Queen, yeah, it's good, it's good. I was going to go Thunderstruck, ACDC. Nah, Scaffy goes Scissor Sisters. <laughs> I'm going Abba, bro. <laughs> Actually, Abba, Abba kind of slap. I kind of like Abba. You know? Wait, Abba has some fucking tunes. Yeah, he's a dancing queen. <laughs> yeah. Bro, well, I would come in a dancing queen. How, how much of a flex is that? You come in, they're not expecting you. Yeah. And then That's you get jacked as fuck. Yeah. And then, you yeah. get, and then you get bashed. <laughs> and then you, you, do get bashed. you do something as pointless as a people's elbow that does literally nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now it's time to pin him. You got people elbowed. <laughs> the, Ooh, the, was it the scorpion death lock? It was the bomb, bro. Fucking, the fucking was... old mate with the cobra? Like, yeah, that was, that was the, the shit. Sh- that was, yeah, that was the shit. At least yeah, like, there's at least there's nothing better than seeing Rey Mysterio hit a 619. Oh, 100%. Yeah, those mo- like that's fucking wrestling to me. That shit is fun where it's like, you're watching a dude do a fucking triple spiral X fucking thing off the top rope, and you're just like, that's sick. That's some fucking. Yeah, you know what shit. I used to do a lot to my younger brother? I used to Batista bomb it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. See, I was the younger of three brothers, I like, so I just got Batista. Yes, yeah, so, so, so you, you got bashed. Yeah. Well, there was one time, there was one time I actually thought I broke my neck and I was scared to move because we were wrestling and we're on my brother's oh, fuck, I think it was like in his room. We moved the bed and everything, and so we were wrestling. And he grabbed me by the ankles and spun me around his room, but then <laughs> slipped and let go. And I smashed my neck. It was like a cartoon. I smashed my neck into the wardrobe and just heard a crack. And like, it's like, I was like, hit the wall like this. And I'm just like, I'm like, oh, fuck. Am I, like, is it, is it broken? I'm like, is it sore? Like, <laughs> You're like, too scared to yeah. <laughs> like, That first assessment period where I'm like, I don't know what the fuck just happened. I'm like, does it, does it move still? Yeah, you start screaming, Mom. Yeah, like, I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's okay, it's okay. You can get me back. You can get me back. You can get me back. You have the sweaty. Fucking those yeah. windows. Look, I'm not saying I got beat as a kid, but I mean, he got beat as a kid. I got beat. But you were the youngest. You were the youngest of all the brothers. Yeah. And you were a bitch. And then underneath me, I just just well, like below we, me was a sister, so I had nothing. Dad wouldn't. Dad would never let me be like fucking even look at her. <laughs> cool, bro. Thanks. I love this. I love this chain of screaming that stops at me. <laughs> chain of screaming. You just get beaten That's, great. That's it. Yeah. 
That's it. I mean, that was your role in the family <laughs> to get back. Well, I contributed. <laughs> built, built resilience, you know? <laughs> exactly right. You wouldn't be where you are if you didn't have exactly, that. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Let's there look at the guys. positives. Physical what? abuse is actually building resilience. <laughs> what a flex. <laughs> <laughs> what a flex. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard anyone with that flex before. Yeah, That's no, good. You know. It's it is. Put it on a bumper sticker, back of your t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> new new matter athletic a drop. <laughs> t-shirt release limited edition. Abuse is resilience. <laughs> just need to really joke, good... guys. Don't report that. No one <laughs> come and cancel it. It just needs a really good graphic <laughs> of you getting bashed. <laughs> Can you write an article on that, Ben? What's that? Abuse build resilience. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm not. I'm not touching that. Okay. Your next article with references, please. <laughs> <laughs> Your brother, your brother's reference. Bro, you need to throw something. You start calling someone out, you know? <laughs> just, just really put some people on blast to make a name for myself. <laughs> anyway, let's leave it there. Chris needs to eat. I need to eat. We've been Don't going forget for YouTube. Bit. Yes. So for those uh, that do actually watch the YouTube, we appreciate you. According to you. the dick board. And can you please uh, like, subscribe, or subscribe, like, comment. And comment. Um, if you do ask questions on that channel, we'll actually, I'll actually read them. So, what was the thing? Will you that? Yeah. Ask the fucking details to log in. <laughs> yeah, but we can still read the, we can read the actual thing anyway. You don't Wait, need the details to log in to read the questions. Are we even subscribed? To I mean, I am. Oh, you I don't know. I'll have to check that. I'll have to check that. It's the know. Elite Strength channel because we haven't got our own channel just yet because. I don't know why. I have to ask the dude <laughs> that does all the media. Of course, stuff. of course, Scaffy made about himself. I'll <laughs> fool out over here. Fucking fool out over here. Hey okay. man, this is, this is how this works, bro. He's he's got one channel. He's got them all on the one channel. So right, maybe he has I'll like keep fucking it. seven now. There's like another one that just came out called "And the Rest." <laughs> it's just the, uh, <laughs> yeah, like the guest appearances. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like it's still under the Back one channel. The rest. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, it's still on his one channel, and they're just different shows. Yeah, so it's like Rose, we've got one channel with two different shows at the moment. So we're just chat. adding shows. Bodybuilding bollocks, um, fucking the real bodybuilding podcast, and the rest. Well, I guess should we try and get a guest on for next week? Yeah, if anyone has a guest in mind. Oh, that, that's where I was going. Yeah, like someone, yes. someone different, someone that, someone like. Mm, how's this? Know. How's this? If you're a listener and you want to be the guest, DM one of us. Yeah, let's find out. Let's see. We'll I mean, pull. you're not going to get totally ripped apart, but I'm going to say. We'll put one. We'll put one guest on, maybe as a. Oh, we may go in raw. Yeah, we. There's no spit. If no. You're, if if you nominate no... yourself and you're not contributing, it's just going to turn on you entirely. <laughs> yeah. It's like the guy Sisterino of the fucking bro chat. <laughs> <It's like laughs> we need a guy Sisterino. Yeah. And please make sure your internet works, unlike Chris's. And make sure. <laughs> and make sure if you are guy Sisterino, you're not fucking late. He <laughs> yeah. was so late. He entered the call. In he just rocks up, bro. He always has the worst excuse too. He's like, oh, "I was stuck in traffic." <laughs> it's the same time. Train every week. Earlier. It's the yeah. same time every week. <laughs> but yes, please for those on YouTube, as always, we do appreciate you. Also, um, the actual subscribers are going up. I think we're at like thirty something subscribers now. Oh shit! Really? <laughs> I think so. Hold on. You're joking. <laughs> thirty I'll people want to see these faces. I, look, I don't understand that either. Maybe it's for the elite strength one. These are, <laughs> these are the faces in porn that uh, they face down. Like the point of view is like this is the, this is the this no. Is they the just video focus video. on the girl. They don't focus on us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I wonder if it says thirty-one subscribers. Hang on, you're about to be thirty-two because I actually only unsubscribed. I oh, see. What a dick. Yeah, Ben's gonna check too now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, guys. See, listeners. This is what I deal with. Fucking amateurs over here. Yeah. Well, that's why you're for ad. It's amateur not. hour. <laughs> that's why we should call create a show. Amateur hour. It's just this show. <laughs> it's just a show. It's the show. <laughs> with one more guest. Yeah. You're just one more guest. Elite strength. Uh beautiful. There we go. Thirty-two subscribers. <laughs> yeah. hey, we're, we're flying. We're flying right now. Um. Hang on. Wait, the Elite Strength Podcast or is it just the Elite Strength page? I think it's just it's oh, no, the there Elite, it is. Elite, there, we're Elite on there. there we go. Podcast. There we go. Okay. Yep. Subscribe. There you go. There you go. Done. We're on there. All right. So we're up to 32 or 33 now. We're up to, we, uh, we should be 33. I should be 30, 33. There you go. 33 subscribers. So we appreciate you all, bar the two that just subscribed. So fuck you. And <laughs> as always. Back. Is anything else going on coming out that we need to know? I did see Chris actually put on his story. I reckon he put on his. Yeah, there was some work done on the course. Just, just, just to prove that he's actually doing some work on the course. <laughs> I was I'm a flex on us for sure. Yeah. It's coming. It's coming. 
That's what she said. Um, <laughs> That's what I said when Coke kicks in. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming, all right? It's going to happen. <laughs> Fucking settle down. <laughs> Benny boy, got anything happening? Anything that we need um, to know about? Just still taking on clients. Um, I'm not stopping over Christmas, so don't think you have to wait till the new year <coughs> much. Even if you need, even like we said, if you need a check-in, consult, fucking book it in. Um, besides that, just trotting away on, on the shit, on the course, data, research. Boring stuff. Yeah, all the fun stuff for us. Same, same. Yeah. Course coming out soon-ish once I have finished it all. <laughs> She's been, uh, 2025 you can <laughs> come, come. but when it's finished it'll be really good I that. there's a lot of uh, a lot of juicy lot of juicy content in there so that's like that prep 16 weeks <laughs> 16 he's saying 16 weeks left of prep Basically, yeah so crew <laughs> Sixteen weeks left of prep, uh, yes. and I'm excited. Thank you very much. Can you not hear me? And I'll uh, sign that off with just peace and love. <laughs> <laughs> peace and love. Smooth. All right, guys. As always, thanks for tuning in, and we will uh, chat to you soon. Later, guys. Later's.